you know? I still remember it to this day. It was summer 2009, and Barcelona was about to announce the signing of Zlatan Ibrahimovic from Inter. It was supposed to be the cherry on top of a brilliant Pep Guardiola team who won the treble last season. With 46 million euros and Samuel Eto'o going the other way to Inter, this was one of the biggest transfers of that era. Not only it was a massive sum of money back in the day, but Samuel Eto'o was one of the world's elite strikers at the time. I was watching the video where Zlatan's agent was being interviewed. Honestly, Honestly, I expected his agent to look like one of these guys, you know, clean cut and in tailored suit. Instead, what I saw was a sweaty out of shape dude with a beard stubble that was at least one week old. I know I'm judging the book by the cover, but that was far from the image that I had in mind. That was his agent, Mino Rayola. He was loud, he was large, and he was in charge. He wasn't afraid of talking trash. More importantly, he wasn't afraid of going after people that were deemed a saint in football. Arigo Saki, Sir Alex Ferguson, and later on, Pep Guardiola would all be victims of his interviews at one point or another. By the early 2010s, everyone knew who he was. One way or another, he would be one of the most controversial agents of all time. If your club had a player represented by Mino Raiola, you just knew there was going to be a bad news in the corner. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. By now, he was handling some of the largest transfers in football history. He was simply larger than life. Fast forward to recently, I was scrolling in my WhatsApp groups when the news got announced. Mino Raiola has passed away at the age of 54. As a football fan, I wasn't a big fan of Mino Raiola, and that's a kind way of saying it. But 54? That's not an age to go, man. Definitely gone too soon. Hated by many and loved by few, Mino Raiola has definitely changed the game of football transfers forever. It's not easy to describe Mino Raiola in one sentence. He was the most controversial football agent in the world, both for good and bad reasons. Everyone in the football industry knew who he was. He was quite unique, but he had a totally different approach to the way he worked for his players. While other agents worked behind the scenes, Raiola was out front, giving interviews, working in public. The big contracts and the bigger transfer fees that he negotiated meant that while he wasn't probably liked by the football fans around the world, you'd have to look long and hard to find players that were not satisfied with the way he worked with them. His job was to put his players in the best and possibly the richest situation. The players knew that and felt protected. But the question is, where did he start from? And how did he become the super agent that he turned into? Well, to answer that, we need to go back, way back to his childhood. The year is 1967, and a certain Mino Raiola was born in south of Italy. Legend has it that when he was born, a new star was created and winter was turned into spring. By the way, that didn't happen. That was Kim Jong-il's childhood. Look, I'm sorry it wasn't as magical. That being said, he wouldn't stay there for long, and he moved to Netherlands with his family. His beginning was far from magical, and for years, he slaved away, washing the dishes, cleaning the floor, and waiting tables at his father's pizzeria. As he got older, his father realized that he had an aptitude for business, and put him in charge of the business side of his pizzeria. While he was doing all that, he also played youth football at HFC Harlem, but stopped at 18 to become the head of the youth team, and later on, the club's technical director. And there's an unusual story behind that. You see, even at a young age, Mino Raiola was a straight talker with a distinct lack of respect for any authority other than his father. The president of Harlem came to eat at the restaurant every Friday, and he always told him that he knew nothing about football. <coughs> Mino told the president, by the way, not the other way around. One day he took the young Mino aside and told him, why don't you try it? And he was appointed as a sporting director. After that, he still remained in football as a football agent in a sports agency company and helped with the transfers of many high-profile Dutch players to Italian clubs, including Wim Young and Dennis Bergkamp from Ajax to Inter. After falling out with his boss, why would anyone be surprised at that? He left the company and started his own agency business. This was an interesting time for football. You see, in 1995, the bossman ruling allowed out-of-contract players to move to different clubs without any transfer fee. That was huge for football, as before that, a player's club could still refuse the transfer even when the player contract expired. That, coupled with the increasing money in the sport, made transfers and contracts more lucrative in football, which kind of meant that agents were more necessary to the players than ever. His first major transfer as an independent agent was Pavel Nedved, from Sparta Prague to Lazio. That was a major coup for Raiola. Pavel Nedved was the next rising superstar in football who was shining in the Euro 96 and would eventually win the Ballon d'Or later in 2003. 
the good old days when regular human beings used to win the Ballon d'Or award. Anyway, that was a huge deal for Mino Raiola, but he was just beginning. And before we talk about the rest of Mino Raiola's journey, I want to announce that I recently launched a merch store. This is a good way to support creators such as myself. Feel free to check it out. Who knows, maybe you'll like something in there. I'll leave the link in the description below. Thank you for your love and support. In the next two decades, he would be the agent of megastars like Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Paul Pogba, Erling Haaland, and many many more. This is a man who elbowed his way into the big time. Nobody opened doors for him, and maybe that's what set him in his ways, and he never looked back. He's responsible for many high-profile deals, but there's one particular one that I think best represents him as an agent. When Paul Pogba moved from Juventus to Manchester United for more than 100 million euros and signed a five-year contract, it was later revealed that every party in the deal paid him. The selling club, Juventus, the buying club, Manchester United, and Paul Pogba himself. Not just that, but they paid him extremely well, close to 50 million dollars between them. According to the Football League's dossier, Raiola was criticized for his greed by most of the football world. And he responded the same way as he always did, saying that no one was forced to pay him. Everyone did it willingly and everyone could have walked away at any time. The way he saw it, players generate money, that's what the fans pay for. And yet, they're subject to rules and restrictions and often have very little voice. That's why he fought against salary caps, agent regulations, and any kind of oversight that wasn't based on free market. His priority was protecting and fighting for his players while getting rich, insanely rich, along the way. Depending on which club you support, you either loved or hated Mino Raiola. If you were a United fan or a Milan fan like me, you didn't like the guy too much. And that's a kind way of putting it. He would often have disruptive comments at literally the worst times about his client's situations at their club. A prime example is when Raiola commented on how Paul Pogba is unhappy at United and that it's over for him, right the night before a must-win Champions League game against RB Leipzig, creating an unnecessary drama at a time when the team needed utmost focus to stay in the Champions League. On the other hand, if you were a Juventus fan, you loved Mino Raiola for bringing Pogba to your club for free and selling him for a world record fee back to United while also getting Matthias De Ligt to your club despite the whole world wanting him. And that was clearly seen when Juve fans were chanting while Raiola greeted them on his way out from the Juve headquarters. By the way, just a reminder, don't forget to leave a like or comment. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm, as a lot of time goes into making these videos. I really enjoy reading your comments. Thank you for your love and support. I personally didn't like him as a football fan to be honest, but I really respect people who are insanely competent at what they do. Football agents have been the heroes of transfers in the past three decades. However, none comes close in fame or infamy compared to Mino Raiola. I feel like these days, as football agencies merge with each other and become more and more corporate, the Mino Raiola prototype, a deal maker with a phone, plenty of attitude, and no fear, is gonna disappear. And I don't think we'll see another one like him. Although I wouldn't be surprised if we see clones of Mino Raiola who try to emulate him for a quick buck. Honestly, as a football fan, I didn't like him, but 54 is way too young of an age to go, man. And I can only hope the best for his loved ones at this hard time. That was Mino Raiola. He was definitely not a saint, but certainly a game changer.